So I want to do a quick demo that starts from scratch. and documents me creating a head and just walk through the thinking process of, of everything I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to uh, use the move brush. I am adjusting my draw size. Make sure you are checking out module zero for all of this. Okay. I have a basic proportion. And I'll just draw it real quick. Three fourths and one. And I'm holding that inside my mind. I know that proportion is what's essential. After this, I'm not going to sweat it too much. With the move brush, that's the end of it. I used to take it further, but now I'm not. Now the next thing I want to do is I switch either do the clay buildup or the standard. It's up to you. Some people still use standard, but I'm going to use clay buildup. And this is going to instantly inform me with a lot more structure. So the structural elements I put in are the front of the face. I'm going to try to put in the rectangle for the nose, a down plane for the brow. That's going to be really important. I try to put in frontal eminence, superciliary arch. Try to put in the zygomatic bone, the muzzle of the mouth, and then the transition from the front to the side. So I carve in the eyes and I always carve in the eyes. So I press alt with the clay build up and I'm really just carving in. If you have any questions, shout them out. I am looking at the questions tab. And I always pull a line straight down along the side of the nose and then straight across. That's a super fast way to establish a front plate, as sculptors call it, of the face. Muzzle of the mouth. Long strokes pulling from the cheek to the chin. Help me establish that plate of the face. Get that side to the front. Ignore the eye itself. Always put the cavity in. You have to keep the form in your mind. Getting the edge. Jaw. You can draw it in and then sculpt it in. I establish frontal bone separated from the temporalis. And what I like most about what I'm doing right now is that the form is very obvious. I'm in the back of the head. I'm going to do what they call the nuchal line, okay, the inferior and the superior. If you've had kids, they will have tested, they have uh, did measurements of this while they're in the, in the womb. And that's how they test, uh, that's one of the ways that they test for um, genetic disorders, things of that nature. And we're getting a face pretty quick. Okay, it got a little crazy. But I like to exaggerate that a little bit. I really like to exaggerate that because one of the most important lessons we have, the, one of the most important lessons I've found anyways, is, is this one from, one from Bridgman Drawings where you see the arch. Having that, what they call the external angular, I'm not even going to write it, the external angular process of the frontal bone, having that too far out is a very common mistake. 
So if you start pushing that in further, I bet you, I bet you, the sculpt's going to look much better. But there's a couple, there's two things that we need to be mindful of right now, okay? What are my expectations of this sculpt at this point? You might say this is very pixelated. And your tendency might be to have this look really smooth. So this might just look too crazy for you. You don't like how, um, how rough and structural this looks. But there's a lot of solid information in here. Solid plane changes. Really solid plane changes. Significant stuff. And this is what we want to be doing as a sculptor is make sure we are thinking about structure first. That's why we don't have the eyeball in there. Because that's not the structure of the eye. That's not how we set it up. So we work with structure and the clay buildup brush is what really helps us get that structure intact. The standard brush um, requires that you have much more of that in your own mind. And uh, if you need more resolution, you need to be over here in geometry. But let's hold off on talking about that. I'm going to leave that at its normal. But if you're not getting the same results I get, come to your tool, geometry, and adjust this. Try to get it up to three. Now you'll have that if you went to Lightbox and you use default sphere. So if you're following along with me and you're not in the exact same place I am, most likely you did not go to project and default sphere. But again, I recommend don't follow, take notes. Follow along on the recording. Somebody once said all sculpting is basically sculpting along Z. This view from below is our view. It's what we as sculptors own. Painters don't deal with this very much. They can fudge this left, right, and center. They don't have to deal with the realities of somebody looking at their painting from below or looking at it from a different angle. So they don't have to be, you know, 100% accurate on this. The, the key word is they don't have to be. If they're traditionally trained, they would have learned structure. But a lot of times, their primary focus is shape, is just getting the, the overall silhouette or form in there. Uh, or I should say silhouette, not even form. Well, let's say form. But we are more than form. We're structure. We're engineers. We're engineering this thing in front of you. I am building this thing like a, like an engineer lays out his blueprint. So I've got engineering diagrams I use. And they're all held in my mind. So that straight line became a glabella and superciliary arch, drops down, goes out to the side and then down. That's a structural element. I also know that the nose needs to have its side plane as well. So that's what I'm going to start working on. And that's why clay is so important to me. Might suggest a little bit of an eyelid. I've seen with great success, I've seen sculptors who will just quickly put that upper eyelid in. And just that upper eyelid is enough to make that look like an eye, right? And that's enough to get you kind of centered so it doesn't look like you're, you're doing something terribly crazy. Three quarters view. Time to check and push back if you need. I'm going to use the move brush. I switched with a hotkey. If 
but I'm not going to sweat all that. This is, there's going to be a lot of movement that happens here. And I'm going to say I'm going to say we're for the most part okay. I'm going to I'm going to see if I can pull an ear out. And if you've tried to do this yourself, I'm going to pull this out manually. It's very painful. But it can be done. What I recommend always for things like this is um use a mask. So if you're not familiar with masks, pay attention to me one second. It's real simple, but they're a key component to what we do, and this is exactly one of the stages in which we use them. We'll press control, and you can see it starts to show this mask pin up in the brush. And I just mask out. And then control with a pin still selected, I just click outside the model to invert it. And now I can switch back to the move brush and start to pull out. The key thing is that when I use the move brush, I'm, my cursor is touching that last polygon. That way there's a fall off. So that this is essentially my brush and this rim gets left out. So it really only pulls things out this way and gives me a bit of an angle. This is one of those things about the move brush that if you're ever explaining this to somebody else, you want to make sure that the person is aware that their brush is this 3D sphere. It's what we would call, uh, it, it has its sphere of influence, you would say. You can see the white line of it, right? But this white line isn't just a 2D plane. It's not just a real simple 2D plane at all. It is a full sphere that's going inside the model, outside the model, and affecting everything within its sphere of influence. The best diagram for this is actually one of the interface items. If you go to brush, you can see it under depth. That black line is the geometry. The black line that I just painted white. <laughs> this is the sphere of influence of a brush. And so what I always explain to people is I will press out there and drag this way and that will naturally get me a slope. It's just one of the things of using the move brush. Then I press control so that I've got the mask brush selected and I click alt to inverse and I just move the geometry in. Click, press control, click and drag to deselect. Okay, we haven't gotten into uh, Dynamesh or anything of those new features right now because the most important thing is that you're able to sculpt something and you have some control over edging. And some control over planes. Okay. If you can get to just this level when you're starting out, so that there's no more geometry, there's nothing else, it's just all you're doing are these sketches, then this is a very good place to be. Very good. Because what we want to be doing is making sure that we understand the structure of whatever we're doing. In this case, I'm doing a face. If I start doing the structure, if I start sculpting a military character, I'm looking at the structure of a backpack. I'm looking at the structure of the uh, harness, of the holster, of anything. You're always looking at structure because we're engineers as sculptors. So depending on your level of experience, I want to make sure that you know that this first week, this is what you want to be doing. And if you keep them simple like this, I'm fine. But make sure you, you get them. You start really working them. 
Now, if you're able to get past this, then we're going to move into the next phase, which is uh, starting to get more of the individual form. Okay, starting to really establish more of the internal characteristics than we really have, some of the secondary characteristics, and uh, really refining the edges. So any questions before I move to this next stage of development? If you uh, are looking for daily sculpting exercises, this is exactly what I would recommend. But let me just write, you know, I'm going really slow right now, but that, that's per on purpose. We used the move brush, we used clay buildup, we used uh, the alt key, which is useful for Z add and Z sub. We used a smooth brush, and that's really it. One, two, three, four features inside of ZBrush. I don't know if I used anything else, but not too much. There's a ton of interface items. Thanks. We also used a mask. Uh, there's a ton of interface items, but the most important thing you know is that, that it's not all relevant to you. Okay, Pixelogic is a company, they have a business they run, and one of the things that they need to do is wow you. Your job is to be both wowed, but also to get to work. And you don't need everything that they put in there. They're re they're the, when they are the best company, in my view, for keeping things focused on just stuff you need. But in this particular case, we only need the move, clay buildup, alt, smooth, and mask to get us here. We have not even really gone into anything inside the tool palette. So this first week that you touch ZBrush, you just sculpt faces. And if you start to get confused with geometry and all that stuff, then you know, don't do it. Just keep it like this, a whole bunch of pixelated, polygonated faces. But in order for me to get to the next phase of stuff, then I really need to start to cover the polygonal edge of reason. <laughs> so let's, let's, let me show you guys this.